Hello and welcome to today's lecture on branch prediction. Uh, in the last couple of lectures, we have been discussing about different types of hazards and in the last lecture, we have focused on control hazard and we have seen various, how various compiler based approaches can reduce the penalty arising out of control hazards and today we shall focus on dynamic approaches. So, here is a quick repack, recap on the importance of stall reduction and this is very crucial in modern processors where multiple instructions are issued and to keep the different functional units busy inside a processor, there is a need to have a steady stream of instructions and uh, stalls due to control hazards dominate. It has been found that stalls due to control hazard, had, hazard is diminishing, uh, is, is uh, dominating. The reason for that is as the, as more and more number of instructions are issued in a single cycle as it is done in a superscalar architecture, the gap between two branches reduces in terms of instruction cycle. If you, for example, if the, if an, if there is a branch after four instructions and if four instruction, if three instructions are issued in a particular cycle, then in the next cycle itself that branch will appear. That means, the branch frequency <coughs> uh, increases and so far we have looked at static schemes for reducing branch penalties and same scheme applies to every branch prediction instruction. That means, uh, the techniques that we have discussed in the last lecture, we have discussed some scheme, schemes like uh, not taken, branch taken or not taken and that particular assumption or prediction is applied to every branch instruction. Now, uh, in a real, in a, in a whenever you execute a program, a same branch instruction may be taken at a particular instant and in another instant, it may be untaken. So, dynamically the situation changes, which cannot be captured by uh, the compiler based approach, where we assume that always branch is either taken or not taken. <coughs> so, uh, so, can choose most appropriate scheme separately for each instructions. So, uh, what we can do, we can go for uh, some dynamic technique, which can learn appropriate scheme based on observed behavior at run time when the program is in execution, that time it can, uh, it can, uh, it can identify, I mean it can learn from the appropriate scheme based on the observed behavior, which we shall discuss today. And dynamic branch prediction schemes, there are several branch, uh, branch prediction schemes that we shall discuss uh, for both direction T and T and target prediction. That means, uh, whether branch will be taken or not taken and also the target and this prediction will be all carried out simultaneously or together. And these are, these feature, this feature has become the most uh, important element of all modern processors. And we have seen that, this is what we discussed in the last lecture three stall architecture and how it can be improved to have one stall architecture. Then we have discussed various static streams, predict branch taken, predict branch not taken and how to use uh, the slot, delay slot in a very effective way such that the penalty due to branch is reduced. These things we have discussed. So, today we shall discuss about dynamic schemes uh, where we shall be using branch prediction buffers and also we shall be using branch target buffers. That means, branch prediction buffers will hold information about uh, whether a branch will be predicted taken or untaken. On the other hand, the branch target buffers will hold information about the target address 
normally target address is taken uh, after computation in the instruction, but whenever you are predicting then branch target buffer can also be stored in cache memory and from, uh, from where it can be read and used for uh, uh, generating the target address and the instruction fetch can take place from that target address. And also uh, return address tags can be used where uh, there are many return ad return instructions. Those return instruction addresses can be stored in a store stack and with the help of all these dynamic schemes, the performance of a processor can be significantly improved uh, over control hazards. <coughs> and as I have already mentioned in the last lecture, basic idea of branch uh, prediction is to uh, uh, it is the assumption that branch assumption is correct. If yes, then we have gained a performance improvement, otherwise we discard instruction and in such a case few cycles are wasted. And there are two basic approaches, first one is direction based approach which are used in compiler, uh, uh, which are used by compilers and another is profile based approach which we shall be discussing today. So, we have already seen the direction based approach, it is these are very simple to impl implement and say branch is taken or not, not taken. However, often branch behavior is variable, so it, it is dynamic as I mentioned and misprediction rates can vary from 59 percent to 9 percent and on the average it is 34 percent. So, this cannot capture this static based static approaches uh, used by compilers based on compilers cannot capture such behavior at compile time with simple direction based prediction. And so, it is necessary to have history based approach that means, as the program program is executed the history based on the history or profile uh, the prediction is done. So, you have to maintain some information in hardware which will do this. So, this history based branch prediction an important example is state based branch prediction. So, here you will require two parts number one is predictor, predictor will try to guess whether an instruction will branch or not and also where it will branch. So, this is the job of the predictor and it will set a bit to 1 or 0 depending on whether branch is taken or not taken. So, when a branch is taken. Uh, it will store some information a particular uh, flag bit which will be 1 if it is taken and if it is not taken it will be 0. So, pipeline checks bit values bit value and predicts uh, that means, whatever is stored uh, in a based on a previous history that will be used to predict whether the branch will be taken or not taken the prediction is a hint that is assumed to be correct. So, you must uh, remember one thing this prediction that we are doing is essentially a hint and prediction may be correct, may be incorrect. So, if it is correct then we gain, if it is not correct then uh, the gain is not there. So, that you should keep in your mind and whenever you do the prediction fetching begins in the predicted direction whether it is taken or not taken. And obviously, uh, this type of state based branch predictions should have a recovery mechanism. By recovery mechanism, I mean whenever the prediction turns out to be wrong, uh, incorrect or wrong, the prediction bit is inverted to fix the mistake. That means, say earlier uh, a, a branch was taken, now it is untaken or not taken. So, the bit has to be inverted and that is done in the recovery mechanism. So, let us first focus on the simplest history based uh, branch prediction that is using one bit predictor. So, you will be using a one bit and use result from last time this instruction executed and small memory indexed by the low order bits uh, of the branch, uh, branch instruction. So, what is being done? So, suppose you have got a this is the address. Branch, I mean branch uh, that means the, that address corresponding to a branch instruction and this may be 32 bit. So, what can be done may be 4 bit or 8 bit 
will be used to index a small memory, where this will this will index a memory and where you will store that single bit. That means, it will be uh, 0 or 1, this is the 0 corresponds to uh, untaken or not taken and this corresponds to taken. So, so you can see you are storing one bit uh, corresponding to each branch address that has been encountered and this is used for indexing purpose. So, this is a kind of uh, cache memory. Later on, I shall discuss about the cache memory in details, there you will see, uh, there also the lower order address bits are used to as a as an index and to point to memory locations. So, here also the same thing is being done and uh, however, uh, you are storing only a single bit of information T or N T and starts off as T. So, that means, initially uh, initial value is usually T and it flips whenever a branch behaves opposite to prediction and it benefits from large pipelines, particularly whenever you are using a large pipeline, then it is benefited. Let us see uh, how it really works. So, you have got, uh, you can using a single bit, you have, if you look at the straight transition diagram. State, if you look at the state transition diagram of this predictor, it has got two states corresponding to uh, taken where the value is 1 or not taken or untaken. So, if the uh, if the outcome is taken, then it then it comes back to this, it remains here. But if the if the prediction turns out to be uh, wrong, then if it is un not taken, then it will go to this state and next time if it is not taken, then it will remain here. So, and if and if, if the uh, it will remain in the uh, not taken state as long as the pred prediction turns out to be, no, I mean if the branch is not taken and here it will remain in this as long as uh, the, uh, the it is taken. So, whenever it is in taken state, if a branch is not taken, then it will go to this. On the other hand, whenever it is in the not taken state, if a branch is taken, then it will go to this state. So, this is how the, the, uh, the this, this particular thing works and this is the state tension diagram. And as I mentioned, uh, for simple pipelines, the benefit may not be much. However, whenever you have got very large pipeline, say uh, 12 stages, 10 stages or more, then uh, you will be benefited more. Now, let us have a look at the limitations of one bit predictor. Now, prediction value may, may, may not correspond to the branch being considered. So, this is a very interesting uh, observation. You see here it is being you said that prediction value may not correspond to a branch being considered. Say what we are doing, we are indexing by using the 8 bit address. So, this is a branch address corresponding to a branch instruction. Now, there may be another branch instruction having the same bits, that means same uh, lower order 8 bit. So, this will also point to the same location. Now, uh, what, may, what can happen? This particular, we are trying to predict when the branch address is this, I mean the, uh, the, uh, the instruction uh, address corresponding to, correspond to this, but the value correspond which is being stored here corresponds to this branch, this branch instruction. So, what is happening? Uh, we are trying to predict from the lower order address, which may have come from some other branch. The main flaw here is, you see uh, normally in a cache memory, we have tag bits. Later on, I shall discuss uh, in detail. Uh, in, in that case, you know what is being done in case of uh, conventional cache memory, 
you have if this is the different fields of the gas memory. So, here it has got two parts, one is your tag and another is your data and of course, there are few flag bits which I am not showing valid and other thing. Now, these tag bits are missing in this particular cache. So, although we are using cache memory, but tags without tags that means, without tag bits. What is the what is done by the tag bit? The higher order address is stored in the tag bit. So, whenever uh, I mean if the pointing is done with the help of this lower order address, then higher order address is compared with the tag value that is being stored. So, in such a situation the problem that is arising here uh, will not occur. That means, if since we are, our cache is without tag, so it will be always hit. And in case of conventional cache memory, you know it is not always hit. That means, the uh, only when the higher order address is same as the tag bits. So, uh, these two has to be same, only then there is a hit. So, this higher order address is compared with this tag and uh, only when they are same there is a hit. But in this particular simple situation, there is no tag bit, so it is always hit. And this is this problem is arising out of this prediction value may not correspond to branch being considered. So, as I have already mentioned, this cannot be avoided because branch prediction buffer serves as a cache without tags. So, we are holding the information in branch prediction buffer, which is acting as a cache memory without tags. Now, let us consider some examples, consider a loop which is looping 10 times and repeated executions of the loop will result in two incorrect predictions. So, first iteration flips and not, uh, not taken to taken and last iteration flips from taken to not taken. So, at least I mean there will be two uh, mispredictions. So, uh, two mispredictions and out of 10 and so, the prediction accuracy is about is 80 percent in such a case. Now, if the branch alternates between taken and not taken, what can happen? Uh, a particular program branch is uh, for a particular um, uh, branch address, it is alternately changing taken, not taken, taken, not taken. So, whenever we use one bit, then what will happen? The prediction accuracy will be 0, because uh, you will uh, you will you will predict taken, but it is not taken. So, you will mo modify it to uh, not taken next time. So, this is actual and this is uh, predicted. So, predicted is taken actually not taken. So, you have modified it to not taken and again it will be taken. That means, if it alternates uh, it will continue and uh, taken it will be not taken. So, what will happen? The, 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 the misprediction rate is very high 100 percent. So, we get 0 percent accuracy. So, this is the limitations of one bit predictor <coughs> and this is another example. So, uh, actual outcome of branches is not taken, not taken, not taken, 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 taken. So, this is how I mean for a, for a particular application this happens. So, uh, initially it was taken. So, uh, next be because previous branch was not taken, so it was modified to not taken. So, it match is matching here. So, a previous one was not taken. So, here it is not taken here, it is matching here, but here previous value was not taken, but now it is taken. So, there is uh, wrong, uh, this is incorrect, this is a wrong prediction. So, if previous was taken, so here it is taken. So, uh, here is the again matching. So, we find that uh, in this case there are two wrong, so which are shown by red color and four correct. So, there is 60 percent of accuracy. Now, how can we improve uh, this prediction? So, instead of a single bit, we can go for two bit predictor, uh, which can do even better. So, of course, this is a special case of k bit predictor, we can have k bit uh, in our prediction predictor. But uh, for the sake of simplicity, 
uh, we shall consider two bit predictor and we shall see uh, how this two bit predictor performs and whether they later on we shall also see by increasing the number of bits whether there is any benefit or not. <coughs> so, change prediction only if twice mispredicted. So, incremented if taken, decremented if not if not taken. So, this is the basic idea of two bit uh, uh, dynamic branch prediction scheme. So, it is done in this way. So, suppose uh, since you are using two bits, it will have four states. Let us assume the lower two states correspond to uh, predict not taken, predict not taken and the, the top one corresponds to predict taken. And uh, when uh, let us start with this state 0, 0, we shall be having two bits. Now, uh, whenever predict uh, here the prediction is predict not taken and if, if it is not taken, it will keep on looping not taken. And if it is taken, it is incremented by 1. So, it goes to this state. So, here it is 0, 1. Now, uh, if, if it is again not taken, it comes back to this state. That means, it is decremented when not taken and incremented when taken. So, when taken it is incremented, now if it is taken then it will go to this taken and not taken we have already taken care of. Now, it will go to taken means it will increment by 1, so it will become uh, 1 0. In this particular case, if it is not taken again it will come back here, it is it will be decremented and if it is taken it will go to this state taken if it is not taken, I mean go to this state we will uh, with value uh, 1 1 and if it is not taken, it will come back here. So, we find that uh, the uh, for a uh, this is the case for 2 bit predictor. In general, we can have n bit predictor. In a n bit predictor, the number of states can be starting from 0, 1 up to 2 to the power n minus 1. So, in, in case of 2 bit, it is 0, 1, 2 and 3. So, these are the states. Then, we, we see that uh, it is incremented whenever it is taken and it is decremented whenever it is not taken. So, we can start with this or we can start with this, that can be our initial point. So, here if it is taken, it will remain here. Now, this, this we are realizing with the help of a saturating counter. What is the difference between a uh, saturating ordinary counter and saturating counter? The difference lies in this, as we know in case of ordinary counter, uh, it starts incrementing from 0, then 1, then 2, it, in this way it will go up to 2 to the power n minus 1 that means, that will correspond to all 1, then again it will come back to 0. So, that is the conventional counter, but here it is not so. As you can see, uh, whenever it is uh, incrementing after, uh, if you if you whenever it reaches the uh, value 2 to the power n minus 1, it remains here. That means, if it is if it is taken continuously, it will remain, it will remain here, it will not, uh, it, will, it will saturate at that point. Similarly, if you keep on decrementing, uh, whenever uh, it is not taken, it will reach the uh, point 0 and it will remain in that uh, as long as it, it is not taken. So, this is, this is called saturating counter and uh, when the value is half, half of 2 to the power n minus 1 or, or uh, half or more, then it is taken and it is less than half, then it is not taken. So, there is a boundary as you can see, 
the upper half corresponds to predict taken and lower half corresponds to predict not taken. So, whenever uh, it switches between these two, uh, the uh, it changes take between taken and not taken. So, this is how it works in general for n bit counter and for a 2 bit predictor, this is how it works. So, this, this is a 2 bit predictor as I have mentioned, this is a special case of n bit saturating counter and it can take on values between 0 to 2 to the power n, n minus 1, when the counter is greater than or equal to half uh, of the one half of the uh, one half of the max value predict is taken, otherwise predict not taken as I have already mentioned. Okay. So, this is your 2 bit predictor and here also the branch prediction buffer is implemented as a special cache as I have already mentioned this you are storing the bit values in a cache memory uh, that branch predictor buffer and this is accessed during instruction fetch, fetch stage. You can see uh, this cache memory is accessed by at the instruction fetch stage and again lower order address values are used, used for as a pointer. So, lower order address these are the lower order address bits which are used as pointer and which is these are the predicted values uh, 1 1 1 0 uh, depending on those states that I have already mentioned that means 1 0 0 1. So, 1 1 1 0 0 1 1 0 these values are being stored uh, that predicted values are stored here corresponding to different uh, uh, I mean inst instructions corresponding to branches. <coughs> now, let us look at the performance of this 2 bit predictor what is the predictor accuracy using a 4096 entry 2 bit branch predictor for a typical application. And it has been found that 99 percent to 80 percent depending upon the application. So, it, it, it will dependent on the application program. So, uh, from one application to another application uh, it will vary, but prediction accuracy appears to be quite good it is 99 to 80 percent. Now, as I mentioned we can there is a scope for increasing the number of bits in the predictor. Now, question naturally arises what is the optimum number of bits that should be used in the predictor whether 2 bit is sufficient or 3 bit is better than that significantly better than that or 4 bit is significantly better than that. Uh, so, what is the optimum number of bits that should be used uh, for predicting and it has been found that 2 bit predictors do almost as well as n bit predictors. I shall show you the statistics for uh, application programs. Another scope is can the accuracy of branch prediction be improved. So, there are two ways by which you can improve the performance. One is by increasing the size of the uh, branch target buffer another is by using a better prediction scheme. So, uh, uh, later on we shall see how the accuracy of the branch prediction can be improved. So, first let us see what is the uh, improvement as we increase the number of bits. So, it has been considered for spec 89 benchmarks using 4096 entry 2 bit predictor buffer. So, the study was uh, performed long back, back in 1992 by Pan, So and Rame. So, here you can see this is the frequency of mispredictions for different programs. So, mispredictions as you can see varies from 18 percent to 0 percent. So, for this particular problem application uh, EQN TOTT, uh, I do not know exactly what is this application, but for this application the misprediction rate is very high. So, the you can see the frequency of misprediction uh, is, de is dependent on the application. Now, let us compare this with that of uh, unlimited number of bits uh, that is having uh, unlimited number of uh, entry that you have got. So, here you have got only 4096 entry. Now, if you increase the number of entries unlimited entries, 2 bit entry, unlimited number of 2 bit entries, what is the uh, frequency of misprediction. As you can find in most of the cases, uh, 
there is some improvement, but very small. For example, for unlimited uh, entries, uh, NASA 7 example gives 0 percent uh, misprediction. On the other hand, with uh, 4096 entries, 2 bit entries gives 1 percent misprediction. And uh, if we consider the another example GCC, here uh, there is a uh, decrease of only 1 percent of misprediction. So, we find that there is marginal or no uh, increase in performance as we increase the size of the buffer. So, from this what, what conclusion we can make? The conclusion that we can make is that 4096 bit is quite uh, sufficient. Now, uh, there is no need to increase the size of the branch prediction buffer to achieve uh, better performance. <coughs> now, we shall consider about uh, better schemes. So, we have seen by increasing the size of the buffer, we are not gaining much. So, what is the other alternative? Other alternative is to use a better scheme, better scheme than this 2 bit predictor. So, uh, the better scheme that has been uh, proposed, uh, one of them is known as correlating branch predictor. <coughs> So, this 2 bit predictor uses only the recent behavior of a single branch to predict its future behavior. So, what we are doing here, what happened in the recent past, that has that information is being used to predict the future. Obviously, it is not performing well. So, what can be done? It may be possible to improve the accuracy of branch prediction by using branch predictors that use the behavior of other branches to make the prediction. Uh, and these are known as correlating predictors or two level predictors. So, there may be more than one branches in a program, it is quite obvious. So, we are so far we have restricted to the uh, what happened to the uh, present branch instruction. Now, what we are trying to do? We are trying to look at other branches and uh, let us see whether other branches affects the current branch. That means, we are, uh, we are look, uh, looking at the behavior of other branches to make the prediction and this is, this is uh, known as correlating predictor or two level predictor. So, let us uh, look at this example on the left side. If a is equal to 2, then b is equal to 2. So, these are variables, if a is equal to 2, then b is equal to 2 and if b is equal to 2, then b is equal to 0 and if a, if a is equal is not is equal to b, then something. So, this is the example and whenever we go for uh, this uh, MIPS instruction, assembly language instruction, uh, it is assembly language program corresponding to this uh, high level language program, we get this and here this a and b. Uh, are uh, considered these variables a and b are being are being stored in register r1 and r2 so uh, uh, then <coughs> here what we are doing d sub u so you are subtracting 2 from r1 then storing in r3 then we are comparing b not equal to z r3 uh, this is a branch instruction and uh, the, the r3 is compared uh, whether branch, if it is not equal to 0, then it branches to L 1, if it is uh, equal, then it executes the next instruction and uh, similarly, uh, that that B is also stored in R 2. So, here uh, the we are subtracting 2 from R 2, storing in R 3, again if the if we are comparing it with equal to 0 and uh, that that R 3, whether it is 0 or not. Uh, we branch not equal to 0, if it is not equal to 0, it branches to L 2 and perform uh, this is the target address L 2, otherwise it executes D add R 2 comma R 0 comma R 2 and then uh, this is the L 2 branch and third branch is uh, B 3 that this is this one, if it is not equal to B equal to 0. So, that means this if not equal to B, then it branches to L 3. So, this is the assembly language program. Here, the important observation from this example is that behavior of B 3. So, whether that branch will be taken or not taken is dependent on 
uh, is uh, B 3 can be correlated with that of B 1 and B 2. That means, what happened in B 1 and B 2 is affecting B 3. That means, if both B 1 and B 2 are not taken, then B 3 will be taken. So, this is the important observation of this correlating branch predictor. That means, if both B 1 and B 2 are not taken, then B 3 will be taken. So, this important observation can be used in the prediction in a correlating branch predictor. So, uh, previous two branches information about previous two branches can be used to predict the behavior of B 3 that is the basic idea of the correlating branch predictor. And this is a generalization of uh, correlating branch predictor. So, uh, here uh, an m comma n predictor that makes use of outcomes of the ob observed from the last m branches. So, there may be m branches and those m branches can be taken or not taken that will lead to 2 to the power m alternatives. So, uh, previous m branches each of them may be taken or not taken. So, they, it, this bit can be 0 or 1. So, if there are that means, if, if, if it has got m bits and each bit can be if it is all are not taken then it can be 0 and the corresponding m bit if all are taken then it can be all 1. So, you can see you have got 2 to the power m possibilities whenever you consider uh, m <coughs> outcomes of the previous m branches and behavior of a branch can be predicted by choosing uh, from 2 to the power m branch predictors yields improved uh, prediction accuracy for small hardware cost. So, we shall see what is the hardware cost involved in it and history of the last m branches can be kept in a as a SIP register. So, this is how the information of m branches can be kept and each bit records whether corresponding branch was taken or not taken as I have already told if it is taken it will be 0, if it is not taken the, uh, sorry if it is taken it will be 1, if it is not taken it will be 0. And branch prediction buffer can then be indexed by the concatenating by concatenating, concatenating the lower order bits of the address with the m bit history. So, this m bit history and the uh, lower order bit address of the instruction can be used as a pointer, can be indexed by the concatenating uh, by uh, indexed by this. So, uh, let me show it how it can be done with the help of a uh, 2 comma 2 correlating predictor. So, in this particular case uh, we are using 4 bit 4 lower order bit of the address. Then we are considering m is equal to 2, m is equal to 2 means it will it will be having uh, there are possibility of 4 alternatives, previous two branches can have 4 alternatives 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 and the 2 bits that is being stored are uh, taken not taken which are stored here that 2 bit uh, 2 bit uh, that we have seen uh, whenever we are using 2 bit then it will require 4 states 0 0 0 1 0 2 1 2 uh, 1 1 and this is being stored in this particular uh, memory. So, for this uh, purpose of visualization uh, these are shown uh, in a separately but they can be stored in a linear manner in the memory. So, here you can see the branch address is pointing to a particular location and this, this with the help of this index it is you can have one of the 4 that means, in, in this case m is equal to 2 there are 4 possible alternatives and the 2 bit global branch history is pointing to one of these 4s. So, that means, that global branch history means that previous to the, the two branches uh, whether uh, both of them were taken or both of them were not taken, one was taken, another was not taken that history is being used and that is being 
that is that is uh, pointing to one of the four possible columns. So, we have got 60 to 64 total number of entries and out of which you can see one out of 16 is pointed out by the band address and again one out of these four is pointed by the uh, two bit global branch history. And this is how uh, the prediction x x that is your two bit prediction is available from here and which is being used for the purpose of branch prediction. So, a 2, 2, 2 comma 2 buffer with 64 total entries is shown here, 4 lower order or address bits of the branch and 2 global order bits uh, from the index. So, for the purpose of uh, visualization it is shown here, but it may be considered as a single entry that means you can have 6 bit, 4 bit this is the lower order bit address and the higher order bit can be address can be coming from branch history. So, this will be acting as a pointer in such a case your it can be a linear memory. So, uh, there will be 64 entries starting from all 0 to all 1 uh, and each each having 2 bits. So, this is how the uh, branch target buffer can be organized and the information about the correlating predictor can be stored in this branch target buffer. <coughs> and let us see what kind of prediction accuracy is obtained uh, with the help of this uh, uh, particular type of entry, I mean whenever we use this, uh, this uh, correlating predictor. The uh, this was done for the sake of comparison. The comparison should be done on equal footing. That means, you see we are comparing the uh, this correlating predictor with the 2 bit predictor. In case of correlating predictor, you have got uh, the number of the memory requirement that is in the branch target buffer has to be same as that of uh, 2 bit predictor. Only then the comparison will be on equal footing. That is what has been tried here. For example, the number of bits in 4096 entries in a 2 bit predictor is 8 k. So, with the same number of memory for 1024 entries here there is a mistake it will be 2 into 2 into 1024. Uh, uh, 2 into 2 into 2 that means, uh, for 1024 entries and uh, 2 bit predictor and uh, here it will be uh, 2 bit for uh, you know that uh, the, the number of that m and n that is varying that, that is varies. So, it will be 1024 into 8. So, that will give you 8 k. So, with the same number of bits uh, the comparison is being done and this is the 4096 uh, four uh, entry, 2 bit entry and unlimited entry and 1024 entries that is your correlating predictor uh, 2 comma 2. So, here as you can see the there is significant improvement in performance for the this is the last curve. This corresponds to the uh, correlating predictor. So, here you can see uh, the decrease is there is some decrease for some applications. So, 5 percent from 9 percent it is coming down, down, down to uh, 5 percent for the same size of branch target buffer, branch prediction buffer. Here also coming down from 9 to 5 for application a FPPP from 9 percent to 5 percent and for GCC it is coming down from 11, I mean 12 to 11 percent it is same as uh, the uh, the uh, the case where you have got unlimited buffer. So, comparison between uh, whenever we go for unlimited buffer with that it is performing same uh, with limited buffer that means, with 8 k, 8 k uh, entries 8 kilobits. So, for again here you are getting for espresso you are getting a decrease of 5 to uh, 4 to 4 5 to 4, but uh, here there is a dramatic improvement of performance we have seen for this example EQ and TOTT uh, for uh, limited buffer of 8 k and 
8 kilobit and uh, for unlimited buffer it was 8, 18, 18 percent, but as you can see here for correlating predictor uh, it is coming down to 6 percent. So, this is there is a significant improvement in performance of this correlating predictor and similarly for Li application uh, it is coming down from 10 percent to 5 percent. So, what we can say uh, from this our conclusion is this correlating predictors perform better compared to uh, 2 bit predictor with limited uh, branch target branch prediction buffer and also with unlimited branch prediction buffer. So, uh, that is the reason why this particular approach has been found to be attractive. Now, the question arises, we have already uh, seen how this correlating branch predictor, predictor works and what we are trying to do, we are noting down the predictions of other branches or other the predictions for other branches are being used for, I mean the outcome of other branches are being used to predict the behavior of the present branch. In what way, uh, I mean why it is possible? and how it is possible that you should understand and why does the outcome of one branch depend on the outcome of another branch. So, we are considering other branches to predict the behavior of the, of, of the present branch, why this is so. The reason for that is uh, depending on whether some uh, pre preceding branch is taken or not taken, some variable may be set to some value or not. So, what is happening you know some variables are propagating from one branch to another branch and values are modified by the pre previous branches and which are being used by the present branch and this is how one branch is affecting another branch and that is the reason why this correlating uh, uh, branch prediction is working better compared to the, the based on, on the local branch. So, here there is another example of correlating branch prediction example, uh, this is d is equal to 2, uh, if d is equal to 0, then d is equal to 1, if d is equal to 1, then d is equal to 0, else d is equal to 2 and so on. So, this is a simple example and the corresponding assembly language program is shown here <coughs> branch not equal to 0 r 1 comma l 1 that means branch is taking place if d is not equal to 0 and here branch is taking place if d is not equal to 1. So, b 1 is not taken then b 2 will not be taken. So, you see because of the variable that is passing the, that d that variable value is passing from one branch to another branch and uh, from uh, if b 1 is not taken then b 2 will not be taken because d 1 uh, this that the the, uh, the, uh, the variable d is being modified by a previous uh, is branch and that is being used by subsequent branch decision and that is the reason why this uh, this correlating branch predictor is performing well and uh, from this in this particular example for example if b1 is not taken then b2 will not be taken So, let us consider uh, situation uh, where we shall be considering one bit predictor uh, for the example, this is the example that we are considering, how this behaves, how this example behaves for one bit predictor. So, the value of d is changing alternately it is becoming 2 and 0, 2 and 0 and the that b 1 prediction is not taken, taken, not taken, taken. I mean if you uh, substitute it here, you will get this outcome. This is the prediction initially not taken. So, initially not taken, then actually it was taken. So, uh, uh, that was initially that was changed to taken, but unfortunately next time it is not taken. So, this is the uh, new B1 uh, prediction and that is not matching and again uh, it was not taken, so it was changed to not taken, 
So, prediction was not taken, uh, but it was actually taken. So, this, is, this was the case for branch B 1 and in case of branch B 2, uh, again initially it was not taken, but actually it was taken. So, it was, uh, uh, it was modified to taken, but unfortunately next time again it was not taken and uh, again not taken. So, uh, not taken uh, there was a prediction, but actually it was taken. So, this prediction was changed to taken and uh, unfortunately next time again it was not taken. So, in this particular case we find this uh, that for one bit predictor uh, prediction accuracy is 0 percent, because if you consider the first table, first I mean second column not taken, taken, not taken, taken corresponding the value, the value of d is equal to 2, 0, 2, 0 and with the initialization I mean initial value of n t. This is the this is the prediction and actually just the opposite for all the four cases. Similarly, here for the branch B 2 the prediction was not taken, taken, not taken and taken and actually it was taken, not taken, taken, not taken. So, again uh, it was uh, the prediction accuracy was 0 percent. So, I mean always wrong. So, we find that that one bit predictor for this uh, for this example, for this particular example and for these two values of d alternate values of 2 and 0 uh, our prediction accuracy is 0. <coughs> now, let us see how this 1 comma n that is m is equal to 1, n is equal to 1. So, this is a correlating predictor and we shall apply this to uh, the, uh, for a simple correlating product uh, predictor having uh, 1 uh, m is equal to 1 and n is equal to 1 and here it has got two bits prediction if last branch not taken and prediction if last branch taken. So, we are using two bits and it is initialized to uh, not taken, not taken. So, in this particular case as the values of d changes from 2, 2 to 0, 2 to 0 the so b was the b1 prediction was not taken not taken and but actually it was taken so it was modified and the new branch prediction was taken slash not taken and it was and next time it was taken not taken but it was not taken so uh, this is the uh, misprediction uh, this is the uh, prediction uh, and in this way you can show all the for corresponding to this branch, we find that only for the first row not taken, not taken and here it is taken and on the uh, except for this first row, uh, here also we find that for uh, B 2 prediction not taken, not taken, it was taken. So, it was changed to not taken by taken. So, uh, this corresponds to the first one corresponds to B 1, second one corresponds to B 2. So, we find here that except the first row for all other cases prediction is correct. That means, here it is taken not taken, here also taken not taken, taken not taken, taken slash not taken, same taken slash not taken, taken slash not taken. Similarly, uh, the second row here not taken by taken, not taken by taken, not taken by taken, not taken by taken. So, here except the first row for all other cases we are finding that uh, prediction accuracy is uh, correct, that means prediction is correct. So, we can say that prediction accuracy is nearly 100 percent for subsequent uh, cases. <coughs> okay, uh, uh, let us stop here today uh, with this correlating branch predictor. In the next lecture, we shall discuss about another important predictor that is known as tournament predictor. And you know uh, when some games are proceeding for example, a game of cricket, prediction is done some normally prediction is done in two ways. Say out of so many matches, 100 matches, how many match a particular team own. Another comparison is done on this particular ground, so many matches took place and in those so many matches, how many matches a particular uh, team own. So, we can see uh, here 
Now, one parameter is global, another parameter is local. So, this lo local and global parameters are used in tournament prediction. Somewhat similar concept is being used in the tournament predictor that I shall be discussing in the next lecture. Thank you.